Good morning. Welcome to the solution videos to the 2021 Facebook Hacker Cup. This is the solution video to problem C1 and C2, valet parking. So in this problem, uh, you have some magical powers, but you have to, instead of saving the world or helping the universe, you gotta park some cars, you know. Uh, you know, We all have to work, so no worries. And you want to park the cars in some way, and you're given this, this parking lot. However, you need to, to modify the parking lot in order to let some very important person through, just like the game Traffic Jam, if you've ever played it. Uh, now, each of these cars are parked vertically, so you can move them up or down, and you can move all of the cars all at once. Uh, if you move all the cars, if they can move forward, they'll move one space in that direction, either up or down. But if you can't move them in that direction, uh, then they'll just stay where they are, right? Because if there's another car that's blocked by like this wall, um, or if you yourself are blocked by the wall, then you'll you'll just stay there and trying to move the car up maybe won't do anything. So for instance, this car right here, if we tried to move it up, uh, it's blocked. But this car here, it can move up. Uh, and then if we had if we had two cars next to each other, for instance, maybe we had two cars like this, right? These two cars, you can move both of them up and they'd be here and here. So you have three types of operations you can do. You can either move all of the cars up, move all of the cars down, or you can temporarily get rid of one car. So we can maybe temporarily get rid of this car and we can get rid of it long enough for this to pass through. Uh, and then for the next test case, it'll be back. So there are two versions of this problem. In the first version, we just have to solve it for some given grid. But in the second version, this grid will change, and we have to say after each change, how many turns would it take to solve uh, if we want to solve it again. Now, of course, in the second version, this row, which is special, it does not change, right? It's static, which makes the problem a little bit easier to solve. Okay, so how do you solve this first version? Well, um, let's look at just this example, and we can see what the solution would be here. And then we can talk about, about how we could apply it in a more general case. So in this example, the optimal thing to do is to move all cars up by one. So in this case, we'll move this, this one up, this one up, and this, this one up. Uh, this one will stay where it is, and this one will now move into our, into our way. So after doing that, we'll have two cars in this row. We can move up more than once if we want to, but it turns out the best way of doing this is to move all the cars up one, and then we have to get rid of this car here, and this car here. So we'll have a total cost of three, three moves. Uh, once for this, once for this, and then once for the move. Um, of course, these cars would move up too, but uh, they don't matter in this case, so I didn't, I didn't draw that. All right, so one thing to notice here is that you're either gonna wanna move cars up or move cars down or keep them where they are, but you're not gonna wanna both move cars up and move them down doesn't really make any sense. You're just kind of tripping over your own feet. Um, in particular, right, the, only, the only reason you would want to move some cars up is in order to get them above this line. Once they're above the line, you just want to leave them there. So if you're going to be moving cars to be above this line, there's no reason to move other cars down. It doesn't help you at all. You might as well just spend all of your turns moving them, moving them all up. So you're only gonna move cars up or move them down, which means one thing we could consider is, well, what if we brute force the ending Y coordinate that we, that we stop at? Let's look at some particular car. Uh, maybe we'll look at, at this car right here. So for this car here, what Y coordinates will this car be in depending on how many times we move this car up? Right, so in other words, let's see, when will this car be in the way um, for what range of moving up and moving down times? Well, if we don't move this car at all, right, if the net number of times we move up or down is zero, then this car will be in the way. So let's keep this, this table here, offset. Uh, the offset, maybe we move like up two, maybe we move up one, maybe we don't change at all, maybe we move down one, and then maybe we move down two. And you can imagine we, we have more possible moves as well. But for this car right here, uh, it will cost one, it'll have a cost of one if we don't move at all. If we move up any number or down any number, this car will get and stay out of the way. Uh, what about this car right here? So yeah, let's consider, let's consider this car. Well, if we don't move it, it's gonna be in the way. 
So we have a plus one here. If we try and move up once, this car won't be able to move, so it'll be in the way there as well. So we have a plus one here. Uh, if we move up twice, that'll happen as well. And for any number of, of up times, this car will be in the way. So we'll have this entire range where we add one, two for this car. And you can imagine we can do this for every car. So I guess we'll do this once more, just for this car here. Uh, this car is only in the way if we move up. Well, actually, in fact, this car is never in the way because it always has two cars above it. So this car will never actually be able to hit this row. So this car, we don't have to add anything to. Um, this one, I guess, is interesting as well. We'll finish off with this one. So for this car, we need to move up twice. So this, this added to this entire range here. This car needs to add to the entire range of adding two or more, right? So for this entire range, we need to add one to this entire range. Uh, and they're all gonna look something like this. So either we won't add anything to any positions like for this car because we'll never get there. Or we'll add one to an entire range um, like we did for this car and this car. Or it's possible like for this car right here, we only add one to one position uh, and that looks like this. So using a segment tree, we can do a range add um, and range min, right? So just the min of the entire segment tree and then range add. Segment trees support both of those operations and that's all we need to solve problem C1. In fact, you can do it even without a segment tree because you know you're gonna do all of the range adds ahead of time. So you can do those just by storing deltas in some array and then you don't need a log factor even. You can do it in just linear time. Now for problem C2, it's a bit more tricky because well, we have to solve this problem multiple times, right? And things can change. The important thing though, is that these operations are pretty simple. They only matter, like only, only one car ever has this range operation in a particular column. So if we were to add a car to this column here, none of the other columns are gonna change. So we can leave all of those cars how they were. But there might be a few cars that we need to update in this column because we might change you know, how they work. Obviously, this particular space, if we create or delete a car in this space, we have to update that space. But we might also need to update other spaces. So for instance, let's say before we changed a car, there was a car here, then we added this car. Now this, this used to only update, um, let me clean this off a bit. Let's look at this top car here. Before this one was added, this had a plus one in the down one category. And it was just this position that it had a plus one for. But now, once this is added, uh, if we move down two or down three or down four, um, now we need to update this entire range here. So we need to change this from just a plus one to a range add. But it turns out this is the only car that will change other than this one. Um, by adding this, right? And then maybe something will change in the going up direction. Um, in fact, it will, but, but for things going down, this is the only one that can change. Anything above this uh, will still, well actually, okay, the one, the one above it might change too. Right, so this one, this one might be interesting too for going down. Um, but yeah, so, so how, do we, how do we handle stuff like this? Well, it turns out that we're gonna look at the cars that are important. Uh, we will remove all of those cars contribution from the segment tree. Then we'll modify what our graph looks like and then we'll add the car we just added as well as all of those existing cars that we removed their contribution for. So this is one possible way of maintaining it. Um, yeah, so, so we'll look at the cars in this column that are of concern. We will erase uh, the contribution of each of these to our total. Right, so we'll, we'll erase these from this, this offset column, or erase the parts they contribute. Then we'll add this car back in. And then for each of the cars that, that might change, we'll re-add their contributions to this table. So I've kind of glossed over what it means for to be like suspicious that a car might change. Uh, and then I'll talk about that really quick right now. So say we have, we have some column and uh, we have this, this important row here. Let's say this is, this is K from the top. Um, what, what rows might change? Well, it looks like things around the Kth car down. So if, if, you, if you go about K cars down, 
these cars might change. The ones that are like K, K plus one, maybe K plus two, maybe K minus one. You just recalculate for all of them, like K plus or minus five um, of the cars that are, that are K down. Now you can find the cars that are K down using either a segment tree or a Fenwick tree or a bit. Uh, and you can do that in log time. So in log time, we can find all of the cars that are important and then we can remove all of their contributions. Uh, so this will be, I guess, a log squared solution, although you can do better if you need to. And we'll remove the contribution for each of those K. And then uh, that's for the cars that are interested in going up. We also need the cars that are interested in going down. So for things that might hit the bottom, this here is going to be H minus K. This is that distance. So we need cars that are H minus K cars from the bottom. Those are the cars that might change. Again, we can find those using a, a bit or a segment tree, a final tree or a segment tree. Um, and then we can add all of these to our special list of cars which might change, remove them, add or change, change which cars are present here, uh, and then add their contributions back in after. Hopefully that made sense. It's a little bit informal, but I think it, it's helpful to uh, understand the general idea of what's going on before you go look at the code. Uh, and if you want something more formal, you can take a look at the editorial on the official contest website. So yeah, hopefully that was helpful. And uh, hopefully if you weren't able to solve the problem in contest, this is a good thing to, to work on up solving. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next one.